My name is Tom Omansky and I'm a research scientist here at ISB. So the suffix omics refers to any large-scale biological data that provides a comprehensive or nearly comprehensive set of analytes within a certain biological domain. For example, the DNA in your genome is referred to as genomics. Metabolites measured in a cell or in the blood are called metabolomics. And the set of all the proteins in your body, the proteome, is called proteomics. With recent, recent advancements with technology and mass spectrometry and whole genome sequencing, we're able to, at a lower price, get large amounts of data within any given domain. And this allows us to really better understand human physiology and biology at a systems level. So multiomics is really the integration of different omics, like genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, into a coherent analysis. And the major advantage of this approach is that we're able to capture certain parts of human biology that we wouldn't be able to by measuring just one omics alone. For the last 200, 300 years, the reductionist approach has really dominated science and really pushed forward a lot of discoveries. But with omics analysis and large-scale data, we really are able to begin understanding biology at a systems level. One story that the ISB founder, Lee Hood, likes to tell is about three blind men walking and coming across an elephant. So they all approach the elephant. The first blind man touches its leg and claims it's a tree. Uh, the second blind man touches a trunk and claims it's a snake, while the third touches its ear and claims it's a canopy. And although all of these observations are somewhat true, it really takes a systems perspective, a collaborative approach of all three of them together to come to the conclusion that what they're actually experiencing is an elephant. I think the best way to describe this is by the examples we've been uh, analyzing here at the Institute. One is this concept of biological age. So we all know our age and we age every year. We are one year older. But there's this also concept of how our body ages physiologically. And that is actually a rate that different people experience at different rates. Some people age faster than others. So we've devised algorithms using these multi-omics of metabolites, proteins, clinical laboratory tests to predict your actual biological age. And some people, as you'd expect, actually biologically are much older than they are, no, than they are chronologically, and some people are younger than they are chronologically. Through this integration of multiomics, we're able to not only see how certain diseases impact your biological age, but also potentially identify modifi modifiable factors. So some of the aspects that came from this multiomics analysis in terms of biological aging was that we found certain themes within all these analytes we measured, like uh, contamination and kind of contaminants within the environment being one thing that actually makes you look older. Certain lipid changes and increase in omega-6 fatty acids, which is another aspect that can make you look older. So through integration of all these ohms together, we we're able to devise a more precise measure of your biological health. Everyone roughly knows what their body mass index is. If it's up of a certain level, uh, you might be considered obese or overweight and that involves certain risk factors and higher risk of developing diabetes and metabolic complications. So we actually devised an algorithm that can predict your BMI from different omics measurements in your blood. And what we see is kind of what you might expect, but certain athletes or healthy people who have a high observed BMI, actually physiologically, the BMI we measure actually is much lower. So their metabolic BMI is lower. And this is a nice way where we can bring a measure that a physician is very familiar with but through multiomics integration, we are actually able to give him a more precise measurement. One of the biggest advantages of multiomics, in my opinion, is that by integrating all these different large data sets together, we're able to gain novel biological insight into physiology. One example that we've published on previously at the Institute is the concept of the gut microbiome or the ecosystem of bacteria in your gut and how it corresponds to human health and human physiology. Through integrating different omics platforms, we identified that the metabolites in your blood or metabolomics strongly reflect the structure of your gut microbiome. Not only that, many of these metabolites actually are of microbial origin. So gut bacteria break down the food we eat. The little metabolites they produce actually enter the blood and we can measure them and infer certain aspects of gut microbiome health. And one of the great advantages of this approach is that 
we can start thinking about defining microbiome health through a set of blood amylites. But also we can start understanding how the gut microbiome impacts our physiology by, by investigating how these amylites impact your heart, your kidneys, your brain. And more and more studies now are emerging showing that this is indeed the case, that these metabolites have a big impact on our biology.